Please go to elithecomputerguy.com in order to view schematics, code, and more for the projects that you are learning about. Welcome back. So in today's video, I'm going to show you how to use a text editor called Vim. So text editors are very important in the Linux world, not because you're going to be trying to write the next great American novel using them, but because all of the configuration files in Linux are written in simple basic text. So whether you're modifying something like the group files uh, for, for permissions, and, you know, users and permissions uh, with Linux, whether you're changing a configuration file with an Apache or uh, modifying the php.ini file, things like that, you're going to basically have to edit text files. So in the Windows world, you right click, 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 you know, do radio buttons, all of that kind of stuff. It's really nice and easy and pretty intuitive. In the Linux world, we don't do intuitive in the Linux world. We do text files. So being able to use a text editor is very important. Now, it should be understood that I will be showing you folks how to use Vim today. And Vim is one of the avail available text editors out there. It is the one that I prefer. It is the one that I like. It is the one that I think is relatively easy to use. And therefore, that is the one I am going to teach you. But of course, of course, this is the Linux world and there's always a thousand ways to do anything and if there's a thousand ways to do something in Linux they're going to have a whole bunch of people arguing about the best text editor and why you should use X Y or Z let me explain something to you again for me being a, a little simple sys admin I use the text editor to go in and literally modify configuration files that's all I'm doing uh, with these text editors some of these text editors are very powerful and you can do some really cool sophisticated things that I never do <laughs> So, I'm going to show you how to go in, modify files, uh, be able to create text files if you need to, be able to go in and find configurations if you're looking for things. So I'm going to show you how to use Vim as just a very basic text editor, but do understand if you go out and you start talking to some old timer who does Linux and you say, I just learned Vim for Eli the computer guy, they're probably going to give you a whole bunch of crap. But you know, honestly, no matter what text editor I taught you, you'd be getting a whole bunch of crap. So just to kind of roll with it. So with that, I'm going to be showing you how to use Vim today. So let's go and uh, dive into this and, and show you how this works. So here we are at my instance of Ubuntu. Uh, I have this running, of course, on VirtualBox on my MacBook Pro. Uh, but for Vim, whether you're running this in VirtualBox on a MacBook Pro, whether you're running this on VirtualBox on something else, or whether you're running this on a uh, physical computer, everything will be the same. So I'm using Ubuntu 18.04.3 here. Uh, if you're using Vim on a different distribution of Linux, uh, Vim is Vim is Vim is Vim. Should it, so it should be the same. And if you're watching this 10 years after I have recorded this, uh, Vim should still be the same. This is one of those things that, that doesn't really change over time. The only difference may be if you're using a different distribution of Linux uh, is one of the examples that I'm going to use today is we're going to go and we're going to just modify uh, the group file uh, just to show you how to do that. And so within Ubuntu, I'll have to use sudo, super user do, in order to be able to edit it with Vim. So if you're using a different distribution of Linux, you may not have to use the sudo command in order to be able to edit something like the group file uh, so that may be the only difference so with that let's go and we'll actually log in so we'll do bob one two three four five six and now we're logged in we get our basic information so i'm going to do clear uh, now just to make sure where we're at in the world i will use the pwd command to show us our files uh, what folder we're in and so we're in the bob folder and the home folder in the system root i will do ls to see if there's any files or folders within this folder and we can see that there is not so the first thing that we're going to do is we're actually going to create a file we're going to create something called test.txt in order to do that, all we do is vim, v-i-m, do a space, and then whatever we want our file to be called. We're just going to call this test.txt. Um, now, it's important to understand the, the .txt uh, doesn't really matter in the Linux world. It uh, doesn't matter if it's there. doesn't matter if it's not there. I'm just putting it there just 
for my sake so I know what kind of file it is. Um, so do remember, unlike the Windows world, uh, when you're dealing with a command line in Linux, that, that final, that, that .txt, uh, that suffix doesn't matter. But we do vim, we do test.txt, and I hit enter. Yay! We're in a new file. So we can see down here, test.txt, new file, and this is what we got. This is what we got, we got, we got a blinking cursor. <laughs> It's Linux, we got a blanking cursor. So in order to do anything with this file, what I need to do is I need to press lowercase i, and that's for insert. So I press lowercase i, and now we can see uh, down here, it says insert, and once I've done that, I can now do hello world. And then I can go down a few, isn't this cool? And I can go down a few and say this is another lie. And anyways, you get the point. You can go through and do all of these things. Uh, past this, then, if I want to be able to save the file, if I want to save the file, I can just simply hit escape. So that gets us out of the insert mode. And then what I will do is I will do colon. So you can see down here, you see the colon. So I do colon. In order to save and quit this file, what I'll do is W, that is for write, and Q is for quit. And so we will save and quit the file. So now we have quit the file. If we go and take a look, so we do clear, I do ls, and we can see test.txt. If I then do vim, I do test.txt, I can go in, and there we go. So we are seeing the file that I created before. Now at this point, um, you'll notice I'm not in the insert mode. So if I try to type, if I try to type, I can't type. Right, so if I try to do, oops, well, I don't know why that did it. But basically, normally, I don't know why that went into the insert mode, uh, but normally you shouldn't be able to do anything. So in order to do something, what you have to do is you have to hit I again, you hit I, and by hitting the I, again, you get that little insert mode down here, and then once you've gone into the insert mode, then you can start modifying uh, what you wanna say. So I'll say hello world, we can now say hello Bob, and there we go, we hit escape. So we just escape, so we escape out of the insert mode and then uh, we can do colon. And so there's a couple of things we can do here. So we can either do write and quit. So if we want to save what we've done and quit, we do colon WQ as I showed you before. But let's say I'm looking at this going, oh, oh, I don't like Hello Bob. I, thought, I, I really preferred Hello World. I don't like Hello Bob. So what you can do in order to quit and not save changes is you do lowercase q and then you do exclamation point. Lowercase q, exclamation point. Uh, that allows you to quit and not save changes. I hit enter and then we are back to where we were. So again, we take a look. Uh, we do vim and then we do test.txt. We open it up and it's back to hello world. And that's pretty simple. Now, if I don't do any modifications at all, so if I do not edit this file at all, I'm just sitting here taking a look, especially this is an important thing like uh, if you're looking at configuration files, or you're just trying to find something in a configuration file, one of the things I can do is I can do colon and then simply Q, just simply Q and this will quit. It's not writing and quitting. It's not quitting without saving changes because we haven't made any changes at all. So I can simply do colon Q and I hit enter and I'm back here. But I wanna show you something that can be a real problem in the Linux world. Remember, capitalization matters in the Linux world. So let's say I'm doing Vim, I Vim, and I'm like, oh man, what was that? What was the name of that file? Oh, that's right, it was test.txt. Whoops, right? So uh, I need to go and I take, need to take a look at that test.txt file. And see, but look here, I did an uppercase T, lowercase est.txt, and I hit enter. What? What? I don't understand what's going on. Well, this doesn't make any sense. That's bizarre. I, I, I thought there was information in this file. Okay, well, let's see, write and quit. Let me, let me see, maybe, maybe I went to the wrong file. So uh, what it must have been is vim test.txt. We'll do it all uppercase. And then we hit that and it's like, what? I don't, I don't understand. I thought, I thought, I thought it was, uh, you know, I thought it was a uh, test.txt. So it's gonna write and quit. So that's created. And what I really want you to understand is now if I do ls, 
So this lists and this shows us literally three files where in the Windows world, these would be the exact same names, but in the Linux world, these are three, uh, yeah, these are three entirely different files. Uh, test.txt, all lowercase is a file. Test.txt, uh, T, uppercase, rest lowercase is a file. And test, all of it uppercase, txt is a file. So if I go here and I do vim, and I do test.txt. We can go back and we can see our say, see our hello world. Isn't this cool? And then if I quit this and I do uh, vim, and then I do test.txt, we can see that we just get the question marks. So it is very important to understand that these are different files. They're different file names. So you really have to make sure you, you stick with a standard naming convention. So we're going to do colon, we're going to do Q, and then we're going to get out of this. So then the next thing that we need to look at is why don't we actually take a look at a configuration file, something that we might modify. Um, and so what we're going to look at today is the group file. So the group file uh, deals with group memberships for permissions within Linux. So what we're going to do is we're going to CD and then we're going to go ETC. So we're going to change to the ETC folder under system root. And so here what we're going to do is we're going to go in and we are going to open the group file using vim. So the first thing that we do is we do vim and then we do group. So this is the file. And when we open it up, the important thing to look at here is we didn't use the sudo command, right? So if we look, group is read only. So with some of these configuration files, if you don't use sudo, uh, when you go in to take a look at them, basically all you'll be able to do is take a look at them. You won't actually be able to modify anything. Um, so that's, that's not really what we wanna do. So we're gonna quit out of this. And then what we're going to do, do clear. And so we'll do sudo vim. Group. So we're going to open the group file using vim and the sudo command. And when we do that, it's going to ask for a password, one, two, three, four, five, six, plug that in. Okay, so now we are actually taking a look at this group group file right now. And so basically these are all the different, these are the built-in groups, built the, the default groups in Linux, and this has the different membership. So uh, we can see things like Bob, so I'm in some of these groups. Uh, syslog is in one of these groups. And so basically, as you start building this out as a production server, you would have different users in these groups and then you could assign um, permissions uh, basically based off of groups in the Linux world. Again, we will deal with all of that kind of stuff later. Uh, but basically, this is what a normal Vim uh, file looks like. And so one of the things in this that we need to think about is if we're dealing with configuration files, especially text configuration files in the Linux world, one of the biggest problems is how the hell do you find whatever configuration that you're looking for? So let's say you're looking for usernames or configurations or anything else. So how do you find that? How you find that is you do forward slash. See down here at the bottom, you see where that forward slash is. So you do forward slash and then you type in whatever it is that you're looking for. So let's say I am looking for Bob. So B O B. So I'm looking for Bob, and now when I look for Bob, it shows us the first instance of Bob up here, and it's highlighted that. Now, what I can do is if I press enter, and now we can see that it's now the blinking cursor. So once I've pressed enter, then what I can do is if I press lowercase n, it will go to the next instance of Bob in the file, right? So we can see that now we're down here as I press lowercase n. So lowercase n allows me to scroll down uh, when I'm trying to find, find a word or whatever. Then uppercase n allows me to scroll up. So I'm now scrolling up using uppercase n. So in order to do a find, uh, that's what you would do. Then let's say I find whatever it is I'm looking for. It's like, okay, that, um, I, need to, I need to remove Bob from this particular um, whatever group, what I can do is at this point, I can do I, so I type in I, and as we can see down here, it now says insert. So down here it's insert, so then I can go, and since it's inserting, I can then delete this. It's now deleted, I can escape, and if I want to, I could then do write Q, and then this would, this would write and quit. So this would save and quit. Um, I don't wanna do that right now though. <laughs> 
because I don't want to screw up this particular configuration file. So I can go back here and I can type in Bob again uh, and then I can escape out of that. And so now I haven't actually made any modifications, but that's how you do find. So in order to do find, you do the forward slash and then, you know, whatever it is that, that you're looking for. Again, if it's Bob, uh, see now, now it basically finds from wherever your cursor position at the next instance, but then I press enter. And then once I press enter, then I can go up. So we can see the blinking is now up, uh, or I can do a lowercase n and I can go down. Uppercase n goes up, lowercase n goes down, uh, and that's how you do it. Uh, we hit Q and then exclamation. So this will quit without saving because we don't want to actually modify or change this file. And, uh, and there you go. That's, that's really all there is to the basics of Vim. Yay! Now you know how to use Vim to edit and modify INI files and configuration files and all that kind of stuff. So you can go out there and you can have fun. I will warn you, be careful, again, especially when you're modifying the default configuration files in Linux. Uh, if you do something stupid, if you make a modification that you're not supposed to uh, mess with, uh, basically you can have your entire operating system crash and not be recoverable. So do genuinely be careful with that. Again, since it's text files, it's one of those things, like especially if you come from the Windows world and you're used to dealing with registry or whatever, looking at, the, looking at a text file, it's really easy to look at a text file and go, eh, it's not really that big a deal. Eh, I, can, I can edit this, I can modify this. It's not really gonna cause me any problems if I do something stupid. But we have to realize in the Linux world uh, that those those text files, those configuration files, that's that's how the operating system runs. The operating system, that's where it looks uh, to be able to get the information that it needs. And if you go in there and you do some stupid modification, uh, well, <laughs> things things might not go so well. But I just wanted to show you how to use Vim today. Again, the other text editors out there, there are much more powerful text editors where you do a lot of amazing, cool things. Even with Vim, there's some other stuff that you can do. You can actually do like copy paste functionality, that type of thing with Vim. Uh, but I did not want to overload you with that type of information because then people start getting confused and then they want to give up and go be florist. So I, I just wanted to show you how to create a text file using Vim how to edit a text file using Vim to make sure that you really understand that uh, the capitalization and all that matters with Vim and then how to do find. Again, with find, you do forward slash, whatever, uh, whatever you're trying to find. Then you hit enter, you hit enter, that brings you into the screen itself. And then from there, you can hit lowercase n, lowercase n scrolls down on the screen, uh, finding the next instance of whatever you're searching for. Uppercase n goes up in the the screen uh, in order to find the next instance of what you're looking for um, and so those are those are some things to think about the other thing too is again when you're changing uh, configuration files like with group group is actually something that you will modify uh, you may have to use sudo uh, in order to modify that to actually be able to get in there so you can open you can open the file and view it uh, just using normal Vim, uh, but in order to actually modify that type of file, you have to use sudo to go in there, then you can modify it, and, and away you go. So that is the basics of Vim. As always, I enjoyed teaching this class, and look forward to seeing you in the next video.